Hi, third grade scholars. Well, guess what? This week, we're also going to read a biography about an astronaut who we studied during Hispanic Heritage Month, Ellen Ochoa. So you guys already have some background knowledge about Ellen Ochoa from our research that we did back in the beginning of the year. Today's biography is going to discuss how her goals led to her success as an astronaut. And we're also gonna talk about the problem and how it led to the solution in her story, okay? So essential question, why are goals important? Read about Ellen Ochoa and find out how she reached her goals. You notice here in the biography, you're going to have photographs and you're going to have quotations. These are a direct quote from Ellen, things that she said during interviews um, as she talked about her life experience. How many people can say that their jobs are out of this world? Ellen Achoa, a uh, cho a uh, can. She is the first female Hispanic American astronaut. Her job has taken her out of this world four times. Don't be afraid to reach for the stars. I believe a good education can take you anywhere on earth and beyond. Ellen Ochoa. Re Reaching for the stars. Ellen Ochoa was born in California in 1958, the same year the space program began. Back then, only men became astronauts. This was a problem for women who wanted to go into space. Women were not allowed to even apply for the job. Luckily, the space program began accepting women in 1978. Sally Ride, the first female astronaut, went into space in 1983. In fact, it was Sally Ride's mission that gave Ellen Ochoa the idea of becoming an astronaut. When Ellen Ochoa began college, she thought she would be a professional musician, then changed her mind. When she went to Stanford University, she heard about the skills an astronaut required. She decided to try to join the astronaut program. Unfortunately, Ochoa was not chosen. She did not have the right skills. Most astronauts were men. She wasn't a military pilot like many astronauts. She wasn't athletic and strong. But Ellen wanted to go into space. She knew this was a problem she could solve. I can't imagine not wanting to go into space, Ochoa says. She did not give up her dream. Ellen Ochoa trained hard to become an astronaut. Young Ellen was a good math and science student. So let's think. What inspired Ellen Ochoa to become an astronaut? Reread to find out. If you look at the top of this page, it talks about how Sally Ride, the first female astronaut who went into space in 1983, her mission gave Ellen Ochoa the idea of becoming an astronaut. So that's how she was inspired. At Stanford, Ochoa studied subjects related to space. She did research for several inventions that helped solve problems in space. One of her inventions helped guide robotic arms for work in space. Robotic arms look like human arms. They have parts that move like a shoulder, an elbow, and a wrist. They do jobs that are too hard or dangerous for people. Many tasks in outer space require astronauts to use robotic arms. Ochoa's experience with robotic arms helped her get into the astronaut program in 1991. Ochoa controlled the space shuttle's robotic arm. One of Ochoa's inventions helps guide robotic arms. So I wanna talk a, lot, a little about the problem and solution we see in the text. It talks about what problem did Ellen Ochoa have well, Ochoa was not chosen for the space program. So that's at the top here, okay? Now we're gonna look at the actions. What actions did she take to solve her problem? And according to the text, she studied subjects related to space. 
She researched inventions that solved problems in space, and she invented a guide for robotic arms. So if you look here, all of those actions led to the solution of her problem. Ochoa gets into the astronaut program. Training in space. Before she could join the space program and be an astronaut, Ochoa had one more problem to solve. She had to get herself ready. It was not an easy task. She began training in 1990. Her strong background in math and science helped her do well in these new classes. She also had to pass a physical exam to get into the program. She learned to work on the real machines astronauts use during space flights. In training, things keep breaking and problems have to be solved, Ochoa says. I was in training for three years before my first mission. During training, astronauts work on machines that get them used to working in space. One machine creates weightlessness conditions that astronauts feel in space. Weightlessness is the fun part of the mission, Ochoa says. I guess the closest thing would be swimming or scuba diving. What is odd is that weightlessness seems more natural. Astronauts are trained to get used to feeling weightless. So how did Ellen Ochoa train to be an astronaut? Reread to find out. Now, this is an actual interview with Ellen Ochoa, and it's going to follow the questions that were asked and her responses. An interview with Ellen Ochoa. Student reporters interviewed Ellen Ochoa. Here are some of their questions and her answers. What is NASA training like? In training, we prepare for anything that could happen on a space mission anything that could go wrong. Nothing has ever gone wrong on any of my missions, and our training helps us make sure that nothing will. For my last mission, we trained for nine months before the actual flight. How do you sleep on the space shuttle? On my last mission, we slept in what can best be described as a sleeping bag with hooks. You would find a place to hook onto and float in. What do you look for in a potential astronaut, and what is their average age? Most of the people who are selected are between the ages of 30 to 40. We look for a college education in science or technology. We look for people who can do many things well because people with multiple skills can usually learn things quickly. This is a very important skill for an astronaut. Astronauts are able to sleep even in weightless conditions. So looking at this photograph, does that look comfortable to you? <laughs> I was thinking... Gosh, I don't know, she's strapped in, but that does look a little awkward. All right, here we go. Space work is teamwork. An astronaut must be both a team player and a leader as well, Ochoa says. She tells students, you should get involved in activities where you work closely with other people. Working closely with others is an essential part of being an astronaut and solving problems in space. First, there is the ground crew. They inspect and repair the shuttle before each mission. Next, mission control workers guide the astronauts through each moment of a mission and debrief them on procedures. They are responsible for knowing how equipment is working and how the astronauts are feeling. The crew on a space shuttle must work together to get their jobs done. During a space flight, the teamwork continues. Ochoa and the other astronauts work together to meet the goals of their mission. A space flight crew is like a sports team. The commander of the shuttle is the team captain. He or she makes the crucial decisions that have serious effects on a mission. On her first mission in 1993, Ellen Ochoa was a mission specialist. Mission specialists are scientists who do experiments. Ochoa used a robotic arm to send and get back a satellite that collected information about the sun. Then, in 1994, Ochoa was the payload commander on her second mission. The payload might be supplies or equipment, such as the robotic arm. She did satellite studies of the sun's effects on Earth's climate or weather. Each person in mission control works together to make the mission a success. Space Jobs In 1999, Ochoa was a mission specialist again on a space flight. 
During this flight, she and the crew delivered supplies to the International Space Station. She also walked in space for the first time during this mission. Finally, in 2002, Ochoa took her last space flight. Again, she worked on the International Space Station. She used the robotic arm to deliver supplies and help build new parts of the space station. Between missions, Ochoa continued working. She worked with astronauts and ground crew to prepare for other space missions. Astronauts have to work closely together in tight spaces. Ellen Ochoa's Life Today Today, Ochoa likes to travel to tell students and teachers about her experiences as an astronaut. She finds it exciting to communicate with students. She tells them how she solved the problem of becoming an astronaut. She likes to describe life aboard the space shuttle. I'm not trying to make every kid an astronaut, but I want kids to think about a career and the preparation they'll need, Ochoa says. I tell students that the opportunities I had were a result of having a good educational background. Education is what allows you to stand out. Ellen Ochoa has realized her dream. She became an astronaut and she has traveled into space four times. Altogether, Ochoa has spent nearly 980 hours in space. Her space missions have taken her more than 16 million miles around Earth. That is more than 640 trips around Earth at the equator. Ellen Ochoa's job has truly taken her out of this world. Blast off! Some facts about Ellen's trips. STS-56 Atlas II Discovery Date April 4 through 17, 1993 Time and space 9 days Miles traveled 3.9 million STS-66 Atlantis Date November 3 through 14, 1994 Time and space 11 days Miles traveled 4.5 million. STS-96. Discovery. Date. May 27 to June 6, 1999. Time and space. 10 days. Miles traveled. 3.8 million. STS-110. Atlantis. Date. April 8 to 19, 2002. Time and space, 10 days. Miles traveled, 4.5 million. So based on this biography about Ellen Ochoa's life, I think you would be able to answer the question, what do astronauts do? And then based on the details from the story, you can also see how goals lead to her success. Before we move on, I want you to take a look at the text features, the headings, the captions, the photographs. This is called a sidebar, but it's also very similar to a timeline because they are sequenced by the year of her trips to space. Okay. The close reading companion is bringing attention to those text features of the biography. It talks about in the story how you saw a quotation, which was a direct quote from Ellen Ochoa, the captions, the photographs, and what does it tell you? How does that improve the biography's effectiveness of teaching you about her life? So in the comments, I would like you to answer this question. Text features help me understand. So you're going to finish that statement. How did the author's use of text features help you understand Ellen Ochoa's biography? You're gonna answer that question in the class comments after you finish this video. All right, third grade, keep it going. <laughs> 